Hi, today I want to talk about the ATtiny24 and how to solder the QFN20 packages. And I do this like Louis Rossman, my great soldering tutor, or I think he's a great guru on everything that involves practical soldering. Maybe not the best source for theoretical soldering and everything involved by soldering, but he do this on a daily basis and really knows what he talks about. And if you watch some videos, you also get some political and some Apple-centered videos and opinions from Louis Rossman as well. And my really important tool for soldering is my flux and I use the MTech NC559 ASM flux. This is a non-clean flux and you can use this with leaded solder or lead free solder. And sure, if you buy this in your country, this costs a fortune. So, and in my country, there are such few sources for this. So I bought this on AliExpress and be aware there are also many fake versions available so just look a little bit around. And I tested this flux with a syringe or whatever you want to applicate this flux to your PCB boards. But I think my best way I find is to use my flux pen. And this is flux pen for liquid flux. But I use the, the flux pen just to apply the semi-liquid flux. And this is what we're talking about today. This is the ATtiny24 in the Q of N20 package. This is not the smallest package available, but this uses a 4x4 four four millimeter and a 0.5 millimeter pitch. So all the pins are have a distance of 0.5 millimeter. So be aware that you order the right adapter if you want to use this in an adapter. And I today solder the QFN20 adapter and also my own prepared PCB. So you can see how I do the soldering of the ATtiny24 chip. So this is how the adapter looks like. And here are also my own PCBs. And if you want to solder the QFN package just pay attention to the dot and the dot marking are also there's a marking on the PCB so in this case my PCBs have a lack of corners so one corner is not marked and this is where the dot on the chip goes so first I start with flux and apply the flux all around the adapter and then I use my soldering iron and the tip to apply a little bit solder to every pad that's around the corners of the QFN chip. And then I also apply a little bit of solder into the center pad and if it's too much and you have to get a little bit a feeling of what's enough and what's too much. Much. And if it's too much, I get the solder wick to get rid of the excessive solder. And now I take my heat gun and just heat the adapter first a little bit and the, all the tinted pads. So I have a little bit more heat than the chip. And then I take the QFN20 chip and apply it to the heated center pad and wait for the tin to melt and then press a little bit with a little bit force with my tweezers in the center of the QFN package. And then I switch again to my soldering iron and apply a little bit heat to all of the pads. And as you see, some pads have some solder bolts and this is also a way to get rid of the bolts. And I do this with every pad. So every 20 pads I go around with my soldering iron. And now it's time for a little inspection. So I look all the pads and see if every pad is tinned enough and has contact to the adapter board. And then if I find some pad that is not okay, I just use my soldering iron to melt it again. 
And now it's time to solder also the pin headers to the sides. So we need two pin headers with 10 pins for both sides. And for adjusting the pins, I use a breadboard and insert all the pin headers with the adapter to the breadboard and solder then the pins. So it's a little bit stable and all of the pins have the right position. And to begin with the soldering, I use just again the flux pen to flux all the pins. So it's a little bit easier and the solder can melt a little bit easier when we solder all the pins. Next, I start also the soldering for the QFN package with my own produced PCBs and I also start with some flux applied to the PCB and then I also use my soldering iron to tin also the pads and also the center pad and as always if you have too much solder on a center pad then just use your solder wick to get rid of the excessive solder. Then I switch to the heat gun, the 858D plus heat gun that I use and I use about 330 degrees Celsius and for the air blow I use the switch between 3 and 4 and first I also heat the PCB and then I apply the chip to the right position and just wait for the solder to melt and then press with my tweezers on the center of the chip and so it's fixed to the position and I get away with my heat gun and wait for the solder to cool down. And as you see I've applied too much solder on the pads so that this all get squeezed out like some balls around the corners and this is no problem we get rid of this with a soldering iron and just re-melt the solder around the sides of the chip and on the pads so everything looks okay if we have done this procedure. And we see if it's okay when we look at the sides of the chip. So just take the board and let's see if every if the tin on every pad is melted correctly and we have no dry joints or so. And everything is connected to the PCB. And last step, I use some acetone to clean up all the flux from the PCB and just to that the PCBs looks nice. I, yes, I use no clean flux, but it's a little bit, it looks nicer if you have cleaned the PCBs with acetone or you can also use some alcohol to clean up the flux. And now also some size comparison just for fun. I compare the small PCB, my own PCB with the adapter and then also you see at my finger that is looks very very small and my finger are very very big or this is just five by five millimeter PCB. So and next I compare this also with the 80 ESP 8266 and yes we can also use the ESP32 Ruver module just for in size comparison and you see the module for the ESP32 and sure it's more powerful and have also a an PCB antenna and so on but for my small little project I just use this small chip and yes it's have some advantages for my project I use I need very little power consumption no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection and just a wide range of battery powered device so I can use maybe two coin cells with 1.5 volt or one coin cell with 3 volt or I use a Lifipo or maybe also a LiPo battery just to power up my project and also the price just talks for the 80 tiny 24 in my case. So thanks for watching my video and I hope you enjoy it and also learn something today. And as always, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and also consider to subscribe to my channel. I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.